Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna to talk about different rotating assemblies and how they fit inside of your engine block. So if you're building an engine and you're gonna change the stroke of the crankshaft or the length of the connecting rod, we'll discuss how that works inside of a deck height and how it affects the compression height of the piston. Now the main objective of this video is to competently order the correct compression height pistons for your build. Compression height of the piston is the center line of the piston pin bore to the top of the piston. This affects the piston's ability to be either flush with the deck of the block, above the deck of the block, or below the deck of the block. There's quite a bit of compression ratio change that happens as you move the piston around in this area of the engine, so we want to confidently order the correct pistons. Now it's very common when machining an engine block that there's material removed from the deck of the block, making sure it's not only flat, but it's square in relation to the crankshaft journals. On the crankshaft side of the block, you could be align honing the block because you're changing to say an ARP main stud kit, or you could be align boring the block to either get the main straightened back out after a sleeving operation or fitting a set of billet main caps. Either one of these operations effectively makes the engine block shorter and you may need to adjust compression height to get the pistons back to zero deck. Now again, in order to determine the compression height of the piston, we wanna have the block completely done with its machining procedures and measure the deck height of the block. The deck height of the block is the center line of the main journals to the top of the engine block's deck. Once you have that number on a fully machined engine block, write that number down and then we can move to the rotating assembly. If you're working with an engine block that has a step deck sleeve like this one, where the sleeves are actually 2000s proud or 2000s higher than the block deck itself, you're gonna keep that number handy because that's gonna go into your final calculation of the compression height of the pistons. The next value that you need to plug into your equation to calculate the correct compression height is the stroke of the crankshaft. The stroke of the crankshaft is the distance that the piston moves up and down the bore as the crankshaft rotates. If you're building an engine to have a larger displacement, more low speed power, you may buy a stroker crankshaft that moves that piston further up and down the bore. You may choose to use your factory stroke crankshaft, or you can build a D-stroke combination that moves the piston a shorter distance up and down the bore, but with the intent of having higher RPM available. So these are all choices to be made based off what you'll do with the engine, but the important thing is determine the stroke of the crankshaft, write that down, and we can move to the next step. The next thing we need to know is the length of the connecting rod. Now connecting rods can vary in length inside of one engine platform, so it matters whether or not you're using a factory length connecting rod or a long rod, or if you're doing a stroker engine that requires a shorter than factory length connecting rod, but it has to be long enough to keep the piston away from the counterweights of the crankshaft. So there's a lot of options here. You generally wanna use the longest rod available that still leaves you with a comfortable compression height. Now we can move to the compression height of the piston. The compression height of the piston is the distance between the center line of the piston pin bore and the top of the crown of the piston. If you're working with a dome piston, we are not including the dome of the piston in this calculation. We're simply looking for the area that's gonna be surrounded by the bore above the top ring line of the piston. That's gonna be your compression height. Now, if you're asking yourself, what is the optimum compression height? It depends on what you're doing with the engine. If you're working with a high output boosted engine, compression heights in the 1.15 inch to 1.25 inch range offer a part that's light, but strong enough for the workload presented. If you're working with a naturally aspirated engine, you want the lightest piston possible. You can run less crown thickness. You can move that ring stack up higher. Pistons get as short as one inch. Keep in mind the compression height of the piston is gonna be based off of what you're doing with the engine. And there are some exotic engines that are outside of these normal rules. If you're working with an engine and you say, well, I can fit a 1.5 compression height piston, what's wrong with doing that? The piston just gets heavy and that weight has to change direction every time the engine goes round and round and round, which makes it harder on the reciprocating assembly. So you want a comfortable compression height the longest connecting rod you can fit with the stroke of the engine that you're building and have it all fit inside of the deck height of the engine block. Now, why you want to know this and calculate this correctly is because not only can you build an engine that the piston hits the head or the piston is too far down the bore to make a reasonable compression, you are gonna be doing some fine tuning of the target compression ratio by moving that piston up and down in the bore and moving the piston very small amounts in and out of the bore can make large changes in your compression ratio. So if you're ordering a 10 to one set of pistons and that was figured on a zero deck application, 
and you are 15 thousandths proud of the engine block, you are not gonna have a 10 to one compression ratio. So it's important to measure your machined engine block, know your connecting rod length, know your crankshaft stroke, and order the correct set of compression height pistons right out of the gate so you can have an optimized engine that will perform the way you want it to. Now doing these calculations is something that most engine builders do on a regular basis. If you're not totally comfortable with the subject and you'd like some more help, feel free to reach out. One of our competent build advisors can make sure that you get the correct pistons the first time. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.